Live from Alta Vista High School, it's time for Colonels basketball. It's time for playoff basketball. The Alta Vista Colonels hosting the William Campbell Generals in the semifinal of Conference 44 tournament action. I'm Kyle Haney. With me is my esteemed colleague and everybody's valentine, the one and only Mr. Oscar Briggs. O.B., how you doing on this Tuesday, February 14th? I'm, I'm doing great. Conference 44 semifinals, and we're facing a familiar foe, William Campbell, for the third time in, I think, about 13 days. That's exactly what Coach Harris said. He said, you know, three out of our last five games are basically going to be against the William Campbell Generals, and obviously that's a fact not lost on William Campbell's head coach, Teron Watson. These two teams should be very familiar with each other. Oscar, they were both comfortable Alta Vista victories a few weeks ago. However, one a little bit more comfortable than the other. you got to remember the game here at Alta Vista. Campbell had that to a one-point ball game to start the fourth quarter. Well, and it, 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 at William Campbell, it was very, I think it was a one-point separation at the half there as well. So uh, William, Cap- William Campbell certainly capable if they can string four quarters together uh, with ath- athleticism. And they got a couple of guys, uh, Josh Rosher, Andre Reed. Uh, Pierre West, Traquan Williams, those guys can all play. Uh, If they can string together four quarters tonight, it could spell trouble for the Colonels. Could have some difficulties. And remember, folks, this is an elimination game. It's win or go home. If you make it to the conference final, you don't have to win that ball game to get into regionals. But you do have to win here in the conference semifinal to advance onto regional play. So the loser of this game tonight, their season is done. All the Colonel fans certainly expect the year to keep on going, but I'm sure the William Campbell Generals would love to play spoiler. It's the Subway pre-game show. You can eat fresh with the Footlong Fest. The Footlong Fest is on at both Alta Vista locations, any Footlong, for just six bucks. Got a chance to catch up with the head coach, Troy Harris, a mere moments ago. He'll tell us about the last time the Colonels were on the court. Seems like a while ago. It was against Gretna one week ago from today. And he'll tell us what's in store with round three against the Generals here tonight. I'm Kyle. He's Oscar. Eleanor, our sound engineer at the moment. We're so glad you're joining us for some Valentine's Day hoops. It's Alta Vista. It's William Campbell. Quick timeout on the Subway pregame show, and we're back with the head coach, Troy Harris, on 105.5 KD Country. You'll always leave happy after purchasing a Best Bet Motor Sales vehicle. Stop by our Rustburg or Amherst site and check out our great inventory of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Best Bet Motor Sales, proud to have been awarded the Virginia Quality Dealer Award for District 6, 2016-2017. See for yourself our great selection of pre-owned vehicles. Browse our vehicles. BestBetMotorSales.com, home of the 60-second guaranteed credit approval. Installing atrium vinyl replacement windows is like an investment in your home that can begin to pay dividends right away. You can save up to 30% or more on your home's heating and cooling costs. Add to your home's equity and add to its value by upgrading its looks and energy efficiency. Custom-crafted atrium vinyl replacement windows. Invest in your home's future with English's. English's is your complete home center. Business 29, Alta Vista. When you need an important business loan, you want to deal with a decision maker who will respond quickly. I'm Penny Wallace with local First National Bank at our airport branch. I'm focused on business customers, and we have a streamlined process to help you with any loan need. I can offer various business loans for real estate, new equipment, and credit lines. So for better business banking, think of us first. That's local First National Bank. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. At Subway, Monday is no longer Monday. It's Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki Day. That's the 350 sub of the day. Subway has a different six-inch sub of the day every day of the week. Each has no artificial flavors or colors from artificial sources. For just 350, it's a great sub for a great price. Wednesday, that's Turkey Breast Day. Friday, tuna day. The 350 sub of the day every day at Subway. And participating restaurants, additional charges for extras and deluxe, plus tax, may not be combined with other offers, coupons, or discount cards. Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. Valentine's Day basketball edition of Alta Vista and William Campbell. It's also conference 44 semifinal time, probably more importantly. Uh, we're here at Alta Vista High School. We're talking with the head coach, Troy Harris, and Coach Harris. 
Uh, kind of even hard to discuss your last time out. It was a week ago against Gretna. The Hawks had a lead in the third quarter. Then you guys sort of surged ahead. Another one of those ones, it seems like I've asked you this question a bunch. You get tested, then you pull away. Right. Uh, ugly wins better than a pretty loss any day of the week, right? Absolutely, and we've been doing it all year. As you know, it does seem like you ask me the same stuff over and over again. I asked our assistants the other day what our best win was from top to bottom, and we struggled to come up with one. I don't think we've played our best basketball yet, so – I guess I can look at that as a good thing. Hopefully our best basketball comes out when the postseason coming up tonight. Um, yeah, we hung on and won, and that's all you can really ask at this point is just get the win any way you can. Well, let me ask you about the rhythm and the flow to your to your team right now because you had those weeks where you played four games and three games, and then you've had weeks like this where you've gone a whole week without playing. Uh, hard to keep the guys focused, or maybe you like having some breaks in there like that? Yeah, it's kind of nice to have a break. We actually gave them the day after the Gretna the game off to you know sort of recuperate. We had some bumps and bruises and some scrapes, so we got healthy on Wednesday, and then we really just competed every day. We got in here, we ran through a couple of drills at the beginning, but then we just played against each other and just th- tried to you know make a game situation out of everything. Obviously, you can't simulate an actual game, but we were getting after each other pretty good, doing the best we can doing different situations, you know, down six, three minutes to go, or up two with 20 seconds to go. How do you play that and do that? So I think we had a good week, and hopefully it shows tonight. Well, William Campbell, the opponent in town tonight. You beat him twice already this season. Uh, The game over here at Alta Vista was a little bit closer than the game there at William Campbell. But, again, you surged ahead in the fourth quarter. Uh, remind folks what William Campbell's all about if they've forgotten from a few weeks ago. Yeah, this is William Campbell. We're playing them the third time in five games overall, so it's it's hard enough to beat a team three times a season, much less three times in five games. So, yeah, very athletic. Um, they're just sort of unpredictable. They're, you don't really know where the shot's coming from, and sometimes that's a little bit harder to do when you get, like, a team that runs their stuff. You pretty much know where the shot's coming from. It's sort of easier to guard. So they come down, they don't really run a whole lot of, you know, sets. It's just they get the ball, and then whoever thinks they can make the shot either drives to the rim or pulls up and takes it. So we really have to be on our P's and Q's defensively, ready to, you know, when a shot goes up, react instead of like, oh, no, we weren't expecting him to shoot it. And um, then defensively, they they mix it up. They run some 1-3-1. They run some 2-3. They like to press a bunch of different zone presses. You get the book out on defenses, they probably run one of each. (laughs) So we're we're really got to be on our toes tonight on both ends of the court. Final question for you here, Coach Harris. Uh, You know, I think sometimes we assume that you guys are going to make a deep postseason run, but it is win or go home time. Uh, is that one of the messages there in the locker room before you go out, just saying, hey, guys, we, we need to win this one because we don't get any freebies if we don't win this one? That's right, and I think they're hearing it in the hallways too because I'm hearing it. Everybody just assumes we're going to win tonight because that's what Alta Vista does. If you don't get by tonight, it's over and we're sitting at home. So you still got to play the game. Maybe on paper we're a better team, but it starts 0-0 just like every night, and we got to bring it or we'll be sitting at home tomorrow. Great stuff, Coach. We'll let you run. It's William Campbell. It's Alta Vista. Tip off in 10 minutes on 105.5 KD Country. A short travel save you money. I'm Greg Walker with an exciting new offer from Feller Chevrolet. Purchase any new used vehicle of Feller's and receive a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty and a three-day, 100% money-back guarantee. Again, a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty and a three-day money-back guarantee. At Feller Chevrolet, we stand behind what we sell, and we save you money. Come see us. You'll be glad you did. A short travel save you money. Feller Chevrolet. In Alta Vista. Life happens. Divorce, family problems, criminal charges, civil litigation, personal injury cases. Turn to David W. Shreve, an experienced attorney at law. David W. Shreve has been practicing law for over 30 years. Free consultation for personal injury cases. David W. Shree wishing good luck to the Alta Vista Boys basketball team in the playoffs. Go Colonels! David W. Shree located 7th Street, Alta Vista, or by phone 369-6621. There's nothing like a winning team to bring pride and enthusiasm to a community. The Alta Vista Office of Economic Development is a proud supporter of Colonel Sports. Congratulations to the coaches and players on a winning season. And good luck in the basketball playoffs. The Alta Vista Office of Economic Development, helping grow a better community. For more information and business incentives, contact Dennis Jarvis at Town Hall, 7th Street, Alta Vista. 
PCM Industrial Services recognizes the importance of high school athletics by sponsoring this award-winning broadcast. PCM Industrial Maintenance and Construction Specialists providing welding, millwright, erection, and fabrication services to all forms of industry throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. From offices in Alta Vista, PCM Industrial Services congratulates the Alta Vista basketball teams on another successful season. Good luck in the playoffs. Go Colonels. Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. The Subway pregame show returns from Alta Vista High School. The pep band is here. The cheerleaders are here. And the fans are starting to make their way in on this Tuesday night. Oscar, I think the early start time has probably thrown some people. I know I talked to a few of my buddies that normally tune in, and they said, whoa, 6 o'clock. That's, that's, that's early. I, don't, I know they're not still working. I know that's not the problem. But no. we digress. We're here, and we're glad you're hearing the sound of our voices. Well, you heard from Coach Harris there. He clearly is not overlooking the William Campbell Generals. I suppose the toughest test for a coach, though, is making sure his players don't. Yeah, I had a conversation with one of the parents coming in, and uh, he was the, the exact comments out of his mouth were, gee, I hope we don't overlook these guys. And, you know, it, it's certainly uh, in a coach's mentality not to, but at a, a 15, 16, 17-year-old high school kid, somebody that you've manhandled a couple times over the last – a uh, few weeks, it's a little bit more difficult to, to not look past them. And if you're the William Campbell Generals, we can't forget their perspective in all this. They're definitely trying to play the role of spoiler, and they're trying to keep their season they, going. They, you know, that's the old cliche. They have nothing to lose. They can play loose, uh, and that could play a factor in tonight's game. Generals come into the ball game at 5-16. and 16. If you're looking for some positive vibes, they have won two out of their last three. They beat Chatham 67-61 a loss to Appomattox, and then the win in the first round of the Conference 44 tournament against LeRae, 63-48. Colonels are 15-5. and five. They won one and lost one last week. Of course, we were on the road in Ringgold. The Colonels never really in that ball game, but they didn't get blown out. Oscar, the next night against Gretna, another tight ball game. The Hawks actually grabbed a lead in the third, third quarter at yeah. one point in Alta Vista, on the scoreboard ends up winning by a fairly comfortable margin, but it was anything but comfortable for the Colonels and their fans. Well, it was, and, and, and it looked like uh, they had they played in spurts and, and really lo- looked like they lost concentration at spells and uh, certainly lost some of the defensive intensity at spells. So um, that'll be a, a key factor in tonight's game as well. And you can't take anything away from the Gretna Hawks in that ball game either. Gretna's season is done. They lost in the first round of their conference tournament. Everybody's getting underway. Tournament basketball is a fun time of the year, although a very busy time of the year. And Oscar and I will try and keep you updated as much as we can. It's the Subway pregame show. We're going to step aside for another timeout. Tip-off is less than five minutes away between Alta Vista and William Campbell. You're going to hear it all live on 105.5 KD Country. English Construction Company has been in the building business since 1909, so it's only natural that they appreciate the building process. They recognize the fact that organized sports programs build character as well as bodies and minds. They know that high school sports build our youth into more well-rounded and more productive adults. English Construction Company is proud to be a sponsor of high school sports and salute all athletes, coaches, and teachers. A word of praise and encouragement from English Construction Company with offices in Lynchburg. Some people have never tried food at a Mexican restaurant. So we asked Chad Shelton from Shelton's Plumbing and Heating about his experience. I wasn't so sure what the green stuff was, but they slipped some on my plate one day, and now I won't have a meal without guacamole. Still can't spell it. At El Cazador Mexican Restaurant, if you have questions, they give you the answers in English. Mexican and American foods, affordable prices, and fast service. Try it today, El Cazador, Main Street, Alta Vista. 841-1580. That's the number to know this winter when your heat pump is in trouble. D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling is the name to know for all your heating and air issues. Call 841-1580 to get Don and his team to your house or business fast. 841-1580. That's 434-841-1580. D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling. The name to know this winter. The number to know, 841-1580. 
Napa know how. When you grab a pair of Bosch Evolution Beam wiper blades, now $10 off at Napa, you'll have the confidence to tell Mother Nature to bring it. Because with Bosch Evolution wiper blades, now $10 off when you buy a pair, you'll show the weather who's really the boss. That's Napa know how. Napa know how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores. Offer expires 228.17. Brought to you by Napa of Alta Vista. Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. Less than four minutes away from the tip-off between Alta Vista and William Campbell. It's a conference 44 semifinal action. Winner of this game, as Oscar pointed out during the timeout. Takes on Riverheads, takes on the winner, pardon me, of Riverheads and Stonewall Jackson. If Alta Vista wins, that game will be here. William Campbell's the four seed. If they were to win tonight, they would have to go on the road to one of those two places. OB, we've got the national anthem coming up in a few moments. Before we get there, let me tell you about our starting lineup, which is a little bit different for the playoffs. We'd like to thank El Cazador in Alta Vista. Check out their daily lunch specials at Alta Vista's original Mexican restaurant. Also, Feller Chevrolet, now offering a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. The First National Bank, helping you bring home more bacon. English's, your complete home center, now offering a complete line of Carhartt clothing for men and women. Napa Auto Parts of Alta Vista, find your Napa know-how on Main Street. English Construction, wishing our high school athletes an exciting and injury-free game. PCM Industrial Services, now with mobile welding and repair service. The Alta Vista Office of Economic Development, we invite you to come find one of a kind. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service, a family serving family since 1905. Best Bet Motor Sales, Virginia's quality dealer, District 6 award winner. They're on Route 29 just south of Lynchburg. David W. Shreve, life happens, divorce, family problems, criminal charges, personal injury, turn to David W. Shreve, attorney at law. Lori Watkins, your new State Farm agent in Alta Vista, across from the post office on Broad Street. D.L. Bryant, heating and cooling, call Donnie at 841-1580. That's 841-1580. We're almost set for the national anthem here at Alta Vista High School. you got a few minutes if you're on the way into the gym here on Bedford Avenue. Otherwise, buckle up, enjoy your Valentine's Day with Oscar and myself. We'll have the starting lineups and the tip-off between Alta Vista and William Campbell right after this timeout. It's high school basketball. It's playoff basketball on 105.5 KD Country. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service. A family serving family since 1905. Personal, memorable, memorial moments. Celebrating life and all. Pre-arrangements with confidence. Trust and care from our family to yours. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service. A family serving family since 1905. In basketball, the right combination can save a game. In life, it can save your wallet. Visit Lori Watkins State Farm Insurance in Alta Vista to talk about combining your home and auto insurance and save some money. Like the Colonels, Lori Watkins State Farm wants to put together the right combination so you can win with all of your insurance and financial services needs. Reach Lori or her team at LoriWatkins.net to start winning today. Good luck, Colonels. You'll always leave happy after purchasing a Best Bet Motor Sales vehicle. Stop by our Rustburg or Amherst site and check out our great inventory of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Best Bet Motor Sales, proud to have been awarded the Virginia Quality Dealer Award for District 6, 2016-2017. See for yourself our great selection of pre-owned vehicles. Browse our vehicles. BestBetMotorSales.com, home of the 60-second guaranteed credit approval. Installing atrium vinyl replacement windows is like an investment in your home that can begin to pay dividends right away. You can save up to 30% or more on your home's heating and cooling costs. Add to your home's equity and add to its value by upgrading its looks and energy efficiency. Custom crafted atrium vinyl replacement windows. Invest in your home's future with English's. English's is your complete home center. Business 29, Alta Vista. Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. Final segment of the Subway pregame show is here. Starting lineups for both ball clubs being announced. Oscar, the lights are going to go out here at Alta Vista High School. Not too many more chances to see this laser light show. Of course, the Colonels do have to win here tonight. This is an elimination game. If Alta Vista does not win, 
the season is done. However, if they do get the victory tonight, you'll have a home game on Thursday and then a home game on Tuesday in the first round regional action. Yeah, and that's always uh, nice to get that roll going that many home games on the road here in the playoffs before you hit the road. Playoff basketball is always a little bit more exciting, and it seems like it's been very exciting here at Alta Vista the last four or five years or so, but I could probably even say the last 10 or 15 or even the last 30 years, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just to however far back you want to go. It's been a lot of playoff basketball played in this town. Alta Vista's going to have to win tonight to make sure there's a little bit more being played. Public address man and event coordinator Robert Duff gets the crowd pumped up here. And let me tell you, Oscar, about the starting lineup for William Campbell first. Going to go with number three, Josh Rosser. Number five, Andre Reed. Number 21, Nakia Pierman. Number 32, Pierre West. And number 34, Evan Daniel. Rosser and Reed, a very good one-two punch that has done plenty of damage against Alta Vista in the yeah. first two games. And Rosser went for 30 in the first round of the playoffs. So That's a big number. That, that is a big you know, number. You don't put up 30 just by being average. No. I mean, you've got to be a legit ball player to put up 30. And we, we saw him have some big quarters in, in the two games earlier against the Colonels. He just wasn't able to carry it through. The Colonels were, did a good job rotating bodies through on him. Uh, and I'm sure you'll see a lot of Daquan Poindexter on him tonight. Yeah, yeah. I think if you look back to that uh, second game, round two, between Alta Vista and William Campbell, Rosser had a good half and Reed had a good half, but they weren't in the same half. Right. So and, and The first game was very similar. Rosser had a great first quarter. Reed had a great second quarter, and then they were kind of uh, yeah. so-so in the third and fourth quarter. And maybe that doesn't matter if you're – William Campbell's head coach, Teron Watson. Colonels are coached by Troy Harris. They come in at 15-5. and five. Their starting lineup is very similar. They're going to go with number 30, Josh McClure. Number 15, Lawrence Galliard. Number 5, Chancellor Mormon. Number 4, Daquan Poindexter. And number 3, Mateo Malbec. Interesting to talk about William Campbell coaches. I ran into Coach Danny Brog and the football coach. Uh, he's on crutches. Mm. Blown out Achilles. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Did he do it on the football field? Or no, no. He was uh, doing a little five-on-five five during the uh, time that the uh, basketball squad at William Campbell was depleted with some injuries and some illness. And, and he decided, had to jump in there. He decided he was going to show these young kids what it was all about. And uh, mm. he kind of went down and turned around and said, who kicked me? And <laughs> somebody said, nobody did. And, wow. Uh, blown Achilles. Well, Brogan was a great athlete at William Campbell. Later, a Division I football player with Liberty University. Played a bunch of different positions when he was over there at Liberty. Had a utility man. Yeah, had some trials with some NFL teams mm -hmm. and was never quite able to break through with that. Colonels are going to be in the home white jerseys, trimmed in black and orange. William Campbell in the dark blue. It's almost a gray jersey. It's got the white trim going down the side of the shorts. Not much trim on the jersey at all and we're set to go here at jump circle colonels will be working left to right from our perspective we're in the press box here at alta vista high school tip goes to alta vista and immediately the general's defense drops into a 2-3 zone colonels swinging around the perimeter a few times look inside trying to probe the defense a bit poindexter drove inside the three-point line but had to retreat backwards it's in the hands of Malbec. We're 20 seconds into the ball game. First quarter is brought to you by English's, your complete home center on North Main Street in Alta Vista. It is a 2-3 zone, but I'm going to tell you, when Lawrence Gallier flashes in the middle, he's drawing a ton of attention. He had the ball momentarily and left it off with a bounce pass to Josh McClure. McClure scores off the window for two. It's an early Alta Vista 2-0 advantage. We're 7-19 left to play in the first period. Nice opening possession for the Colonels. We continue to see that interior passing uh, be very precise. Yeah, Galliard had it in the mid post, bounced it along the baseline to McClure, who is cutting to the basket from left to right. Here's William Campbell in the front court with the ball. Three-pointer on the way from Pierre West is good. All of a sudden, it's a general lead, 3-2. to two. Maybe that kind of a night right here. Pierre West still sporting the face mask to protect his face. He's got a steal. He'll slow down for a moment as he crosses the timeline. Now he finally brings it across with a chest pass to Josh Rosser. Rosser on the left wing, surveys the defense. It's a man-to-man -man defensive alignment at the moment for Alta Vista. We haven't seen the zone much from Alta Vista, Oscar, really just in that first game against Dan River. And I like the sign assignment, Josh McClure on Josh Rosser. Uh, 
physicality against physicality. That's exactly right. Rosser with probably a little bit of speed on Josh McClure, but McClure can hang with him at least probably in the half-court set anyway. Five. And I'm it, sorry. Josh will have to be mature enough to recognize when he does get beat uh, not to try to make a foul. Fade away three, hoisted up by Andre Reed is no good. The rebound was tapped around for a moment, but controlled by Daquan Poindexter. He'll saunter across the timeline near the near sideline. Another change of the defense back in a 1-3-1 this time. Interesting. I've always liked that. I've always commented I like it when teams can adjust the defense every time down. I think it makes it hard for the offense to operate. Malback will step into a wide open three. No good. McClure's got an offensive rebound. His first stick back attempt won't go. He wrestles the basketball back. The second one not in either. The third one will work fall. Man. That is incredible. I mean, I'm sure he would have loved to make the first one, but hey, he patted his rebound. And well, he got three rebounds got, on one possession. That's exactly right. Four to three. Alta Vista with the lead back. Here comes a runner by West that's swatted away from Lawrence Galliard. Galliard sent it off the back wall, and William Campbell will have to reset and inbound with 524 left to play in the first, trailing four to three. Rosser breaks free to make himself available for the inbound pass. Good look down low to Evan Whoa. Daniel. Daniel with a pump fake, and he took too many steps. It was a great pass to find him, but Daniel almost seemed lost when he had the basketball. The pass led him a little bit, and it actually led him towards the hoop, but he wasn't quite ready for it, and that forced the travel. Now they're picking up in a 1-3-1 full court press. Love it. Jacob Adams hustled to the scorer's table. He tried to get in on that dead ball, but he'll have to wait to the next time. Colonels do break the full court pressure. They slow it down for a moment. Mormon catches in the right corner. Now lobs a high pass up to the top of the court. What a pass. Wrap around look from Malbec. Then McClure tried the wrap around layup that wouldn't fall. Galliard with a step back, stick back, swatted on the forearm as he hits the ground. The shot's no good, but Lawrence Galliard will have a pair of free throws with 4.58 left to play in the first quarter. The Colonels have a lot of kids that can shoot the three. They don't shoot a high percentage, but when they get hot, they can. Uh, the other way to attack a zone other than from the outside is to penetrate and kick, and they have become very adept at that over the last 10 ball games. Colonels shoot 25% from beyond the arc just to piggyback on your point, which is not a bad number team-wise to be 25%. Galliard's first one no good, second one on the way, and that one will fall. Makes it a 5-3, to three, out to Vista advantage. That's better than they shoot from the free throw line. Just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. 54% from the free throw line. I've done the homework. That's right. William Campbell basketball in the front court, scoring on the bucket to our left. Big Malik Pinnell in the game now for William Campbell. He's in trouble for a moment. Now he leaves it off for Josh Rosser. Rosser's about 35 feet away from the basket. Pardon me, Traquan Williams with another jersey change. Did they do this to us yeah, last Yeah, Traquan time? went to that 23 okay. last time it was available. He went dropped back to 30. Now he's back to 23. So there's... Uh, whatever works for him, right? That's right. I'm feeling 23 today. It's a nice option to have. He sends a bounce pass to Andre Reed on the near left sideline. Reed one-hands it to Pierre West. He's guarded by Jacob Adams. It's Adams, Malback, McClure, Galliard, and Poindexter in the ball game for the Colonels. We're nearly midway through this first quarter. Slow scoring pace, 5-3, to three, Alta Vista on top. Rosser drives, muscles McClure out of the way and scores off the window. We're tied 5-5 five to five now. Well, I like the decision by McClure to to keep his verticality and not bring his arms down. Gave a little bit of ground, and Rosser had to make a tough shot scoring over Josh. Back into 2-3. Alta Vista basketball in the front court. Malbec fakes a pass to the free throw line. They've got Galliard operating there. McClure running the baseline. Adams and Poindexter spread on the wings. Malbec at the top of the key. Galliard had it in the right low post. Sends it back out to Malbec. He scores for three. And, and the patience that the Colonel showed in that offensive set, they were able to feed the ball inside. They, they collapsed on Lawrence. Lawrence kicked the ball out to a wide open Mateo Malbec, who just took his time. That's exactly what you talked about. Penetrate and then dish back out. That time they just penetrated with a pass. Rosser with a crossover dribble. There's a steal by Jacob Adams. He stepped in front of the pass. Easy bucket from the right side for two. Alta Vista's lead is up to 10-5 to five all of a sudden. Good job by Jacob Adams. It was McClure applying a little bit of pressure to Rosser. Adams jumped the passing route. Here comes Williams dishing off to West down in the left corner. It's man-to-man -man defense for Alta Vista. William Campbell lost the basketball again. McClure poked it over to Malbec. Malbec skying from the left side. Lay-in won't fall. Rebound is loose. William Campbell in a hurry. Two on one fast break. Lay-in will go that time from Andre Reed. Little crafty up and under scoop layup from the right side. 10-7, Colonel's lead, but it's been cut into. 
Alta Vista scoring left to right from our perspective in the home white jerseys. Here's Galliard, free throw line. Couple dribbles, gets in the air, passes off, and is fouled. This foul is on the floor, which is a good call. I mean, Lawrence was in the air, but he wasn't attempting to shoot that ball. It was a pass all the way, and the referee saw it and got it right. Yeah, absolutely did. And then the, the break that the Colonels had previous to that, uh, that ended up going to break the other way with William Campbell. The spacing was awful on the Colonels' end. Uh, allowed the Generals to bunch up and defend that. 2.20 left to play in the first period. It's brought to you by English is your complete home center. It's a three-point Alta Vista advantage at the moment, 10-7. to seven. Ball back, cross-court pass to the right side. Daquan points extra, will step into an NBA range three. It's no good. McClure taps the rebound back to Jacob Adams at the free throw line. May have gotten away with some contact. Referees are letting them play tonight. Ball back, catches, drives, quick step to the right, buck, right edge of the bucket, fouled, no foul. He lost the handle as he went to the ground. Here's Andre Reed with another lay-in. His won't go. Adams got bodied up as he secured the rebound. Altavist on the move quickly on the far sideline. Ball back will dribble in with the right hand. Now he'll retreat back out beyond the three-point ring. We've got 140 left to play in the first period. It's a 10 to 7 Altavista lead against William Campbell. Poindexter thought about a three, took too many steps as he was thinking, and it's called for the traveling violation. Yeah. Daquan looked like he was going to take the three, and, and you could see the, the Red Sea part. He had a lane to the basket, and he just got a little excited, I think. You think because he missed the three previous to that and was one of the reasons why he didn't shoot? Yeah, I do. And, and, and I think that over the last three or four games, it uh, looks like Daquan might have lost a little bit of his confidence from the three-point shot. Yeah, he's down to about 30% from beyond the arc now. That was over 40% about midway through the year, so the numbers would tend to agree with you. Enough stats. The action on the court is enough. Rosser still being guarded by McClure. He sends it cross court left side. Oh, nice lob pass down low to get it to the big man, Evan Daniel, and he scores. That was a very, very well-placed lob pass over the top of the defense to free up Daniel. A mismatch with Lance Bain guarding Daniel. 10-9, to Alta Vista's lead at one. Sorry. Just too much strength there. Mall back. Going to try for another three. No good. Back of the iron. Rebound secured by McClure in the middle of the paint. Goes up. Loses it off the window and in on the second chance try. 12-9 to nine, thanks to the stick to from the senior, Josh I, McClure. I've got him down. He's, I think he's right at six boards now. I believe it. Down to 35 seconds left in the first quarter. Rosser holds it on the far sideline. Directing traffic a bit. Wants some help. And... Traquan Williams comes his way. Williams will work around a Daniel screen, leaves it off in the corner, three-pointer in and out from Andre Reed. There's another board for Josh. It was. It's incredible. The blue-collar man seems to be punching the clock and even working overtime some. We're only in the first quarter. Ten seconds left in that quarter, though. Lance Bain was thinking about a three, had to pass it back off to Jacob Adams. Adams over to Bain. Bain will fire. No. Skipped off the front of the iron. Rebounded. Traquan Williams has a long one that hit the back of the iron. That was at least 55 feet. He got it on line, but just a bit too strong. We've played one quarter here from Alta Vista. It's Colonels 12, Generals 9, second quarter on the way when you return to 105.5 KD Country. Here's some valuable information when buying your dream home. I'm Tracy Gallahan with First National Bank, and we offer more mortgage options. We have a wider variety of loans to help you purchase a new home or lower your existing monthly payment. So, for a more custom mortgage loan of any size, contact local First National Bank. We'll show you an extraordinary customer experience and help you bring home more bacon. First National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Now, back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. Quick first quarter of play. It only took about 17 minutes. Alta Vista has a three-point advantage, 12-9. to nine. Some good basketball early there in that first quarter, Oscar. Colonels hitting the three ball a few times. And, gosh, Josh McClure just doing wonders on the glass. But the Generals, as we've come to expect from William Campbell, plenty of fight. They're not going to go away early in this one. Mm, very indicative of what we saw the first two ball games. Very tightly contested first quarter. William Campbell will start the second quarter with the basketball. They trail by three. They're working right to left from our perspective here at Alta Vista High School. Good crowd in the gym. We'll have some shout-outs to come later on. Some of our good buddies are here tonight taking in the game in person. Rosser catches, jab steps, and rips through. No dribble just yet. Now he'll work with the left hand. He does get by McClure. Galliard stepped in to help out. Count the basket, and Josh Rosser is fouled. 
See if they get McClure or Galliard on the foul here. That's where that speed that we talked about came to burn Josh McClure just a little bit. You could see Coach Harris telling Josh, just give him a little bit more space next time and you'll be okay. Rosser with the quick first step and got by McClure. Free throws on the way. It's good. We're all tied at 12 with 7.40 left to play in the second quarter. Coach Teron Watson has them drop back. Now it looks like they're in a 2-3 now. Second tie of the ball game. We're a mere 30 seconds into this second period of play. It's brought to you by English's, your complete home center. Jacob Adams driving. He's tripped up and he hits the deck just outside the right edge of the paint. This foul will be on number 32, Pierre West. It's William Campbell's third. Alta Vista with just one team foul. The one that came a few moments ago on McClure. They've done a nice job defensively in preventing those fouls. Alta Vista will inbound. They get it to McClure. He had a great look at three, but it just rang off the back plate there. No good. Yeah, Mateo Mall back. He's taken three tonight, and he's looked good on all of them. McClure got a piece of the Josh Rosser. And another leader. rebound. <laughs> yeah, no kid. He's going to have ten here in the first half easily. Incredible stuff. He's averaging 8.4 on a game on the year, and that looks to be no problem breaking that average tonight. It's Alta Vista basketball in the front court right. Mall back on the right wing. Nice sneaky little pass to get it into Galliard. Galliard's shot was altered and wouldn't fall from five feet away on the right side. Ball out of bounds. It'll go to William Campbell. Colonel's a little impatient on that. On the court for Alta Vista. Daquan Poindexter is newly returned. Joins Chancellor Mormon, Jacob Adams, Josh McClure, and Lawrence Galliard. Campbell's going to counter with Josh Rosser, Andre Reed, Traquan Williams, Pierre West, and Evan Daniel. Pardon me. 6.35 remaining here in the second quarter, and we're not at, at 12. William Campbell. Here comes a fadeaway three from Williams. It looked good. In and out. No good. Evan Daniels had a chance for an offensive stick back, but he couldn't get it to fall after a little bit of contact. There were four colonels in the lane, one general, and the one general had an extra chance at it but couldn't make it work. Who Still tied the, at 12. Who got the rebound? Yeah, McClure <laughs> got the rebound on that one after Evan Daniel got the offensive yeah. rebound. There's a pass from Chancellor Mormon that's intercepted. General's going to break the timeline in a hurry. Traquan Williams lost the ball. Mormon saved it back in. Pierre West will fire for three. No good. Out to Vista with good rebounding position as Jacob Adams grabs it and is fouled on the catch. The foul is on number 32, Pierre West. That's his second. That mm -hmm. could play a, play a critical role here. He does a masterful job at running the point. Uh, as soon as you said that, I saw Coach Teron Watson take a long look at his bench, and he is going to get Pierre West out for a breather with two fouls. Four on the team. Nakia Pierman enters the ball game for William Campbell in his place. It's a 12-all basketball game. We've had two lead changes to go along with these two ties. Colonels went up. Was it 12-7 at one point? It's 10-5 and 12-7. Mm -hmm. McClure steps in, floats off the window and in. Josh McClure putting together a bunch of points to go with the rebounds, and he gives Alta Vista the lead back 14-12. He's got eight. Good stuff from the senior, Josh McClure. He's down in the defensive stance right now guarding Josh Rosser. He doesn't want his season to end tonight, he is giving, his career. He is giving Rosser a little bit of a cushion. Rosser's pass was wide. It ends up back in the backcourt in the Kia Pierman. Jacob Adams waiting for the backcourt call, and the officials did call it, and it will be out to Vista basketball. With I don't think they call it a backcourt. I think, yeah, they did call it backcourt. At Five. first, they didn't look like they were going to call it. It wasn't a loud whistle, I'll tell you that. 5-18 left to play in the first half. It's a 14-12 Alta Vista advantage there in the home white jerseys. I'm Kyle. He's Oscar. Thanks so much for tuning in on Valentine's Day. Some playoff basketball on Valentine's Day. Mall back. Pushes it in the corner to Daquan Poindexter. Now they trade places, and they trade the basketball back and forth. Daquan will dribble between the circles, middle of the court. Flops it off to the right wing. Back to Mateo Mall back. Galliard fade away. Got a body put into him. His shot was too strong, but the whistles come out indicating a foul, and it was in the act of shooting. So Lawrence Galliard, a couple free throws with 4.53 left to play in the second quarter. Two trips ago, Chancellor Mormon tried that pass, and he tried to rifle the pass in the air. Mall back with a nice little bounce pass there that allowed it to get through the defense. An update about the basketball schedule the rest of the week. We will have Lady Colonels action on tomorrow. They're hosting LeRae. 
If the Alta Vista boys win here tonight, we'll be back on the air with them Thursday. All the games this week at 6 p.m. Galliard's second free throw, good. So he makes the back end, gives Alta Vista a three-point lead, 15 to 12. And with the absence of West, Josh McClure, I mean Josh McClure, Josh Rosser takes over uh, the point guard ball handling responsibilities. Traquan Williams has it up top after a handoff. He curls to the basket, now has to get rid of it 12 feet away. Pump fake, one-handed pass in the corner. Now it's back to Traquan Williams again. 4.30 left to play in the second quarter. Poindexter doing a number on Williams at the moment. Here comes a step back three from Andre Reed. High rebound, no good. Lance Bain had it muscled away from him by Evan Daniel. Speaking of muscle, Daniel just pours the left shoulder right into the chest of Lawrence Galliard. They're going to whistle Galliard with the foul. Yes, it is on Lawrence Galliard. Pardon me. It's his first. It's just out to Vista's second as a team. Evan Daniel with two free throws. 419 remaining in the half. Crowd's coming alive, OB. You hear that? Yeah, I do. And, and Evan, Dan he, Evan Daniel is a strong young man. Uh, he gets his hands on the ball. It's tough to get it away from him. He is strong. A lot of these guys for William Campbell are strong. Josh Rosser comes to mind, obviously. Shoo. Evan Daniel, Traquan Williams. Weight room, I'm sure, getting a lot of use at William Campbell. Both free throws no good. Daquan Poindexter rebounds for the Colonels about 10 feet away from the basket. Nice pocket pass by Malbec to get it to McClure. He tries to bank off the square. It's no good, but he's tapped on the arm and fouled in the act of shooting. 4-10 remaining in the half. It's a 15-12 Alta Vista lead. The foul is on Evan Ding. Josh's first trip to the free throw line tonight. Speaking of stats, Josh's numbers have been getting better and better from the free throw stripe all year. Didn't even give him the announcers, James. He knocked no, you it didn't. down, no problem. I have to try harder next time. I have to throw out an actual percentage, you know. Maybe that'll jinx him then. Just a joke, of course. They can have a little fun here, even though it's an elimination game. Winter season is done. Or, <laughs> Here's a step the winner. The winter season continues. The loser season is Josh done. Josh McClure is shooting 100% from the free throw line on Valentine's Day this year. <laughs> That's impressive. That is very impressive. He's a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Both free throws go in. 17 to 12. Alta Vista's lead expanded. Colonels are going to pick up some full court man-to-man. -man. Andre Reed tries to dribble by with the left hand. He lost it. Didn't see Chancellor Mormon in his rearview mirror. Mormon picks it up as he breaks the timeline. It's in the hands of Mateo Mall back now. William Campbell able to get their defense back and set up for the Colonels could get a fast break opportunity. Poindexter, left corner, thinking about a three, instead lobs to the top to Malbec. Here comes a three-pointer from Chancellor Mormon that was dead on, but too short. Bit of a line drive shot. William Campbell, Traquan Williams beat out to Vista down. He got the basketball underneath the hoop and was fouled by the aforementioned Chancellor Mormon. That'll send Williams to the line to shoot two. OB, might I remind you that the Carhartt sale is on at English is your complete home center. All month of February, all in-stock Carhartt gear is on sale. you got to stop by because that Carhartt stuff is moving fast at English's on North Main Street. Pierre West back into the ball game, Kyle. A little bit of a gamble by Coach Watson with three and a half minutes left here. He pick up his third easily. Yeah. Generals have six fouls as a team. Alta Vista has three team fouls. The most recent one on Chancellor Mormon was his first. Both free throws canned by Traquan Williams. Good job there to bring William Campbell back within three, 17-14. And they're back into 1-3-1. One, one. Love it. Changing defenses all the time. Making you, you at least make the Colonels slow down anyway. Ball back gets to the left elbow, then passes off to Jacob Adams outside. Poindexter driving in. Might have got tapped on the arm, but the shot never really got to the rim. It's rebounded by the Generals. West up ahead to Rosser. Rosser, right-hand dribble. One bounce pass to Nakia Pierman. Now they swing it around the horn to Traquan Williams. He got Mormon up in the air, then he got by him with the dribble. Floater on the way is good. How about Traquan Williams? He's got the last four for William Campbell, and he's got the Generals within one point again. Alta Vista's lead has been cut 17-16. to 16. 1-3-1 one, one zone again this trip down for William Campbell. That, that seems to be the one that's given the Colonels the most problems. That might be the one they stick with. That's the other benefit to trying a bunch of defenses, Oscar. You find one that works, then you can stick with it. It's like you get to experiment for the first quarter or so, then you land on something. McClure's back into the ball game. 
He comes out. He comes in. Pardon me for Daquan Poindexter. It's McClure, Mormon, Adams, Galliard, and Malbec. One three one zone defense still by William Campbell. Adams lobs it over the top to the left side to Malbec. It's back in the hands of Jacob Adams. He'll fire for three. No good. Tried to race down his own rebound, but he couldn't get there in time. Rosser's going to bring it up the far sideline for the Generals. Stutter step. Gets inside a Malbec. Shot doesn't fall. Evan Daniels stick back will. And all of a sudden, the Generals have a one-point lead, 18-17. to 17. We've got two minutes to play in the half. And, and the, the real issue of this 1-3-1 one, one is it causes difficulty swinging the ball on the outside of that zone. They've got to find a way either through Malbec or uh, one of the guards has got to penetrate. Mormon tried to penetrate, but he got stopped at the three-point line. Now here comes Malbec. He'll dig into the teeth of the defense there. Fouled as he floats one up to the hoop. 145 left to play in the half. Mateo Malbec should have two shots. Are they going to say it's a one and one Nope, referee no, held up two shots. First one on Nakia Pierman, Oscar. Seventh one on William Campbell as a team. General's playing pretty good right now. I wonder if those fouls will add up in the second half, though. Oof. They've spread them around, spread them around amongst different players. Yeah, the only one really with, I think, a lot of trouble is West with two. Yeah. Free throw no good from Mateo Malbach. Second one's on the way. It will rattle home, and we're tied again. 18 all. We knew we were going to get a doozy here in conference 44 semifinal. I think play. the first game, the, the halftime score was 19 to 18 or something. That sounds uh, right. 90 seconds left in the half here. It's very possible the score could be something similar to that. It's 18 all at the moment. Crossover dribble for Traquan Williams, not really trying to attack. Finally passes towards the right baseline and gets it back. Catch and shoot three on the way. He's fouled and count the basket. Traquan Williams. Putting on a show here. I believe, Oscar, he has the last seven for William Campbell. That's correct. And it could be eight. He was fouled. You get the four-point play. Mm. And that's Chancellor Woman has done that. Ugh. That third time or fourth time in the last four games. One time is too many, I'm sure, for Coach Harris. I think it's been at least two or three times. You're right. Traquan Williams, the free throw. Good. He does have the last eight for the William Campbell Generals. They lead by four all of a sudden, 22 to 18. By far their biggest lead of the night. Looks like they're back in a 2-3 zone, changing up the defenses, making the Colonels identify it and work against it. Galliard in the left mid post. Pass was swatted away and in the back in his own hands. His defense is swarming. Lance Down. Payne fires for three. Bingo, and he's fouled. All of a sudden, it's become a game of can you top this? And that was a, I think Coach Harris questioned the four-point, the foul on Chancellor Mormon, and Coach Watson just uh, questioned the same thing. <laughs> Love it. Traquan Williams has eight in a row for William Campbell, including a four-point play. Let's see what Lance Bain can do. Oh, he missed the free throw. Colonels get the Hustle play though. by Daquan Poindexter. 105 left to play in the half. Alta Vista could take the lead back on this possession. At the moment, they trail 22 to 21. Crowd really coming alive, too. They're loving it. This is great stuff. Poindexter bluffs the three. <laughs> Do it. Oscar telling him to fire it, big man. Inside to Galliard. He spins around and gets it to go with the right hand off the glass. We do have a lead change. Alta Vista back on top, 23-22. And that's really where the Colonels get exploited. Between Gary and McClure, I, the, the Generals can't match up the whole game down inside in the paint. Rosser, right wing, dribble penetration, underhand pass to West, and then he gets it back immediately. Nakia Pierman holds it over his head, sends it back to Rosser on the right side. Down to 20 seconds left to play in the half. Three-pointer on the way from Pierre West. Too strong. Rebound control by the Colonels. Daquan Poindexter will run it across the timeline just left of center. Ten Coach seconds. Harris calls out a set play. Not going to use a timeout here. Down to seven seconds. Inside it goes to McClure. Works into the basket from left to right. Off the glass. Won't fall. Foul. They're going to call this on William Campbell. No, they're going to call it on Josh McClure. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be McClure's second. The shot didn't fall. McClure seemed to know how much time was left, and he was really gambling hard to try and get the ball back. He didn't like the call. 2.1 seconds left in the game. It's not in the game, in the half. Pardon me. They get it to Williams. Williams runs into a 50-footer. This time it's short. Good first half of play here from Alta Vista High School. It's a slim advantage for the Colonels. 
23-22 Subway Halftime Show right around the corner after this timeout on 105.5 KD Country. A short drive will save you money. I'm Greg Walker with an exciting new offer from Feller Chevrolet. Purchase any new or used vehicle at Feller's and receive a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty and a 3-day, 100% money-back guarantee. Again, a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty and a 3-day money-back guarantee. At Feller Chevrolet, we stand behind what we sell, and we save you money. Come see us. You'll be glad you did. A short travel save you money. Feller Chevrolet. In Alta Vista. Life happens. Divorce, family problems, criminal charges, civil litigation, personal injury cases. Turn to David W. Shreve, an experienced attorney at law. David W. Shreve has been practicing law for over 30 years. Free consultation for personal injury cases. David W. Shreve wishing good luck to the Alta Vista Boys basketball team in the playoffs. Go Colonels! David W. Shreve located 7th Street, Alta Vista, or by phone 369-6621. There's nothing like a winning team to bring pride and enthusiasm to a community. The Alta Vista Office of Economic Development is a proud supporter of Colonel Sports. Congratulations to the coaches and players on a winning season. And good luck in the basketball playoffs. The Alta Vista Office of Economic Development, helping grow a better community. For more information and business incentives, contact Dennis Jarvis at Town Hall, 7th Street, Alta Vista. PCM Industrial Services recognizes the importance of high school athletics by sponsoring this award-winning broadcast. PCM Industrial Maintenance and Construction Specialists providing welding, millwright, erection, and fabrication services to all forms of industry throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. From offices in Alta Vista, PCM Industrial Services congratulates the Alta Vista basketball teams on another successful season. Good luck in the playoffs. Go Colonels! Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. Subway halftime show is here. The Footlong Fest is here at Subway. Any six, or pardon me, any Footlong sub for just six dollars. That's the Footlong Fest at Subway. Check out both Alta Vista locations inside the Walmart on Clarion Road and, of course, on Main Street. Oscar, it's 23-22. Alta Vista in the lead at halftime. What a good first half. Boy, it was. And, you know, we saw uh, four-point leads by both teams. Alta Vista actually had a five-point lead at one point. And um, I'm not tracking lead changes, but there were a bunch. Four lead changes, three ties. It felt like more than that. The lead for both teams really just hovered right around two or three points the entire time. Traquan Williams had the hot hand for William Campbell for Alta Vista. It was a whole lot of Josh McClure in that first half, particularly on the glass. Some other people... Made their presence felt as well. Mateo Malbach hit a three-pointer. Lance Bain hit a three-pointer. Uh, the Colonels seem to be slowed down by the ever-changing defenses from William Campbell. Yeah, Josh McClure with 10, 10 points, and we know 10 rebounds. You know he yeah. had a double-double in the first half. and uh, The Colonels were not consistently being able to get to their offense and penetrate. and. Um, struggled with recognition. I don't know that it was struggled with recognition, but certainly struggled with the execution of, uh, against the different zones that William Campbell threw at him. It was a good first half. We hope you stick around and join us for the second half. It's the Subway Halftime Show. We'll bring it back with some complete scoring numbers in just a moment. It's Alta Vista 23, William Campbell 22. Hope you're enjoying this ringside seat that you've got on 105.5 KD Country. At Subway, Monday is no longer Monday. It's Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki Day. That's the 350 sub of the day. Subway has a different six-inch sub of the day every day of the week. Each has no artificial flavors or colors from artificial sources. For just 350, it's a great sub for a great price. Wednesday, that's Turkey Breast Day. Friday, tuna day. The 350 sub of the day every day at Subway. And participating restaurants, additional charges for extras and deluxe plus tax may not be combined with other offers, coupons, or discount cards. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes in Virginia are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics, high school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Brought to you by English Construction Company, with offices in Lynchburg. Some people have never tried food at a Mexican restaurant. 
So we asked Chad Shelton from Shelton's Plumbing and Heating about his experience. I wasn't so sure what the green stuff was, but they slipped some on my plate one day, and now I won't have a meal without guacamole. Still can't spell it. At El Cazador Mexican Restaurant, if you have questions, they give you the answers in English. Mexican and American foods, affordable prices, and fast service. Try it today, El Cazador, Main Street, Alta Vista. 841-1580. That's the number to know this winter when your heat pump is in trouble. D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling is the name to know for all your heating and air issues. Call 841-1580 to get Donnie and his team to your house or business fast. 841-1580. That's 434-841-1580. D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling. The name to know this winter. The number to know, 841-1580. Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. Alta Vista leading William Campbell 23 to 22 at the moment. It's elimination basketball in a conference 44 semifinal game between Alta Vista and William Campbell. The losers' season is done. The winner will continue on to play Thursday. Remember, Colonel fans will have Lady Colonels basketball on tomorrow. Tip-off scheduled for 6 p.m. between Luray and Alta Vista. You hear it all live on 105.5. It'll be me and the man to my left, Oscar Briggs, bringing you the Lady Colonels action. Always exciting to catch up with them yeah. in the postseason. We get to hear about them for most of the year, but we get to see it with our own two eyes, and all reports are they're in for a real battle tomorrow night against Luray. It sounds like it's going to be a fairly even matchup. We'll try and catch up with head coach Deborah Spencer before the game. Back to the action tonight here, which has been more than enough to keep us interested and occupied. Alta Vista currently with the one-point lead, 23-22. I can see your stat sheet. Scoring for William Campbell pretty spread out, and the scoring for the Colonels somewhat balanced as well. Uh, yeah, very similar. Um, when you go with the Colonels, Jake Adams with two, Lance Bain with three, Mateo Malbec with four, Lawrence Galliard with four, McClure with ten, uh, for William Campbell, it was Rosser with four, Reed with two, Traquan Williams with eight, Pierre West with three, and Evan Daniel with five. Balance scoring for both teams with exception of the two big guns, McClure and Traquan Williams. Surprises me a little bit that Daquan Poindexter held scoreless in that first half. He's averaging double figures on the season. We've seen that Josh McClure is doing his usual thing. Lawrence Galliard's gotten in there and yeah, maybe a little surprising that Rosser and Reed have been limited to six points combined. But that kind of a night. I mean, you never know in the playoffs, right? You just you get you get out there and you get after it and hope you get the points from somebody. You don't really care where they come from. Well, and and William Campbell more of a dribble, penetrate, and kick out. They're not a they don't have a, a real strong set formation offense that they run. Uh, Alta Vista, again, they've they've been able to diagnose. Uh, and done a good job diagnosing what defense that William Campbell was in, uh, the, just the execution. The one three one I think, is really giving them problems. I think you'll see uh, a whole lot more of that as you get it later into the ball game if William Campbell's in touch. I, I agree. I thought the one three one was the best defense for them. But you know my thoughts. I don't mind changing it up a little bit every now and then anyway. If you get into a key possession, though, late in the game, I bet you will see that one three one We'll step aside for another timeout on the Subway Halftime Show. We'll bring it back to the start of the third quarter in just a moment. It's out to Vista 23. It's William Campbell 22. Second half on the way on 105.5 KD Country. Napa know-how. When you grab a pair of Bosch Evolution Beam wiper blades, now $10 off at Napa, you'll have the confidence to tell Mother Nature to bring it. Because with Bosch Evolution wiper blades, now $10 off when you buy a pair, you'll show the weather who's really the boss. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores, offer expires 228.17. Brought to you by Napa of Alta Vista. Finch and Finch, you the know, and cremation, sir. Family serving family since 1905. Personal, memorable, memorial moments. Celebrating life and more. Pre-arrangements with confidence. Trust and care from our family to yours. Pension, pinch, funeral, and cremation service. Family serving family since 1905. 
basketball, the right combination can save a game. In life, it can save your wallet. Visit Lori Watkins State Farm Insurance in Alta Vista to talk about combining your home and auto insurance and save some money. Like the Colonels, Lori Watkins State Farm wants to put together the right combination so you can win with all of your insurance and financial services needs. Reach Lori or her team at LoriWatkins.net to start winning today. Good luck, Colonels. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 1055 KD Country. Alta Vista will begin the second half with the basketball, scoring right to left from our perspective. I'm Kyle Haney. He's Agent Zero, Oscar Briggs. Mall back, jump pass, throws it to the middle lane, Lawrence Galliard. His first try won't work, second one either. And the third one, he's swatted on the elbows and the forearms. That's a foul. Lawrence Galliard going to try some free throws here. We're a mere 17 seconds into this second half. Third quarter is presented by... English is your complete home center. And Coach Harris was lobbying hard. I think the officials have done, have done a nice job staying Absolutely. consistent, Oscar, but it's one of those games where <laughs> just because the whistle's not being blown doesn't mean there's not a foul. There's been some there's been some physicality out there. But it's gone both ways, and I think yeah. they've had a, the referees have had a clean game. Yep. Free throw no good from Galliard. Rebound collected offensively by Daquan Poindexter. Colonels are going to get another chance here. Galliard did hit the first one. It's 24-22 out to this. That's good to see yep. right there. Poindexter cracks the score sheet very quickly. Flies in from right to left and scores with the lay-in. 26-22. Colonels lead back up to four. Here's a behind-the-back dribble from Traquan Williams. Leans, wow. fires, bank, good. Gosh. Traquan Williams has got everything in the toolbox working tonight, doesn't he? Boy, that was a Le- LeBron James to move yeah. behind the back and then just kind of powered. Uh, they sort of overloaded that right side, too, so it was almost an NBA type of isolation play there to get Traquan Williams some space. Colonels basketball in the front court left. Speaking of the NBA, Malbach will fire from NBA range. It's no good. They're going to get Lawrence, ba- Lawrence Galliard with an on-the-back foul. He just got on the shoulders of Andre Reed there and get whistled for his second. First one of the half for the Alta Vista Colonels as a team. We've got 6.54 remaining. In the Englishes, your complete home center, third quarter. Williams brings it across the timeline near the left sideline, then he angles to his right, passes off. He'll work through the defense and get the basketball back on a return pass from Josh Rosser. Now it's down low to Evan Daniel. He's going to try and work McClure in. He will. Wow. And McClure's going to get whistled for the foul. And Daniels was bumping him. They're going to call that on Galliard. Oh, really? Yeah. And and Daniels was lowering that shoulder and banging on McClure. Uh, Lawrence must have barely swiped him in the arm. Lawrence wasn't even really in the radar. No, I didn't think he was even in the picture. Free throw from Evan Daniels, good. Makes it a 26 to 25 Alta Vista lead. Daniel can tie us up again here from the free throw line. Third quarter presented by English is your complete home center. All in stock Carhartt gear is on sale in the month of February. Daniel's second one, oh, no good. Pushed. High rebound was collected by Pierre West, but he was fouled. Pierre West, pardon me, fouled Jacob Adams. And that's his third. Yeah. That's not a good sign. You've got three on Lawrence Galliard. Now you've got three on Pierre West for William Campbell. So Teron, each team with their share of guys in foul trouble. Teron Watson just said, you know, he's going to ride it out. Zone defense from William Campbell. Looks like the 2-3 variety this time. 6-22 left to play in the third quarter. It's Alta Vista basketball in the home white jerseys with the black numbers, orange trim. Colonels lead by one. If you missed the first half, you missed a doozy. Alta Vista led by one at halftime. Had four lead changes and three ties. Basketball skips out of bounds, but it's off of the generals. Colonels will inbound baseline right underneath their own scoring basket. Looked like it was kicked. Coach Watson disagreed. Blow. One referee blows a whistle. Well, I guess he just wanted to tell Coach Watson what happened. It's still out to miss the ball. Look for a minute like they might were thinking about overturning. They the really ball. did. Ball back. Receives a pass in the right corner. He'll drive in from the baseline. The lay-in won't fall. Tough angle. Good defense from William Campbell. Traquan Williams rebounds it. Passes in the right corner to Andre Reed. Williams pass a little bit off the mark. Nice hustle by Josh McClure. McClure was able to get over there to the left side of the court and bounce it off of Pierre West. He actually hit him in the face. West is already wearing that face mask. 
to guard from a previous injury. So clearly that can't feel good. I mean, the face mask gives you some protection, but you got to still feel it a little bit. Of course, the winner of the night's game advances to play the winner of the Riverheads and Stonewall Jackson game. Let's see if we can get you an update on that. Poindexter, three-pointer, good from straight away. Daquan Poindexter cashes in from 22 feet and extends the Colonels' lead back to four, 29-25. Adams got tied up underneath Josh Rosser, really. Foot ended up rolling up Rossers, and both guys are going to hop up and try and shake off a Charlie horse there. It's just the first one on Jacob Adams, Oscar. It's the third one on Alta Vista as a team. Rosser will inbound near sideline right for William Campbell. Throws it in the backcourt to Andre Reed. Breaks the timeline with the pass to the left wing to Pierre West. Inside to Evan Daniel. Skies off the backboard and in. Daniel just kind of shoveled it out with the right hand. And he's using he's using his body. He is. And the officials are letting him play that way. He's crafty. Mall back. He'll try from the same spot that Poindexter just hit. Bingo. Ring the bell. Mateo Malbach has struck again from three-point lane. And both of those were against that 2-3 zone, and that's where they're most vulnerable is right at the top of the key and on the wing. Rosser got going in a hurry. He had Mormon glued to his hip, and they're going to whistle Chancellor Mormon for the foul. It's a 32-27 Alta Vista lead. 4.50 left to play in the third quarter on 105.5. I'm Kyle. He's Oscar. Katie is our sound engineer now. And it's Alta what? Vista and William Campbell. We had a change. They went to the bullpen. Traquan Williams holds it over his head at the right point. He's about five feet behind the three-point line. Now he flips it down low to Rosser. Rosser catches, harassed by the Colonels. Is this a 2-3 zone for Alta Vista? It looks like maybe. It is. Three-pointer on the way and good from Andre Reed. He's shooting 30% from outside. He knocks another one down. All of a sudden, it's a two-point game again. 32-30. to Colonels on top at the moment. Inside, it goes to Adams. He catches. Fires from five feet away. Shot won't go. McClure with the rebound. Second chance try won't go. Adams has it. Power dribble and lost the basketball. Scoops it up. Lost it again. Traquan Williams has it after a scramble. Generals are going to come out of there with it. They can tie or take the lead on this possession. Rosser attacking. Spins. Had the Boy, ball rip it away. No, they call a jump ball. The possession arrow will favor William Campbell. You just got to admire Jake, Jake Adams and the hustle he brings. I mean, he just, he was on the floor over down this, on the, out, out to this, the end of the court and hustled back and, and tied up that uh, possession for the Colonels. Midway through the third quarter here, it's a two-point out to Vista lead. Wow. Offensive foul on William Campbell. That's on Traquan Williams. No, that's on Evan Daniel. Pardon me. And, and see a whole lot there. I, I, I'm like you. I don't, I don't like your call. Colonels will Bring it across the timeline. Malbec jogs it straight ahead against that 2-3 zone defense. 3.50 left to play in the quarter. Malbec for three again. No good. Here's McClure. Offensive board. The shot won't go. Malbec gets in there and takes the basketball away. His second chance won't try. McClure is just thrown to the ground after a hustle play. The shot won't go. When these shots go up, Oscar, and people start crashing the boards, it is like pandemonium in the paint there. I mean, Mateo Malbec took the three, and he was in on the yeah. opportunity for the rebound, and he I got, like that. He got chucked to the deck at one point. That's the third foul on Traquan Williams, fourth one on William Campbell as a team. Josh McClure will have two free throws here with 3.39 left to play in the third quarter. Is there First anything at no stake good. in this ballgame? <laughs> They're playing like it for Boy, sure. both teams are. Fans are into it. Hope you're into it on a Valentine's Day Tuesday night. If you didn't get Oscar's joke, the loser of this game has their season come to a close tonight. The winner will continue, get to go to the Conference 44 title game, and also at least the first round of region play. Nice defense by Jake Adams. Given, 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 and uh, went vertical. But the runner wouldn't fall from Rosser there. It was rebounded by Josh McClure, padding his ever-growing rebounding totals. 2-3 zone defense again from William Campbell. Colonels in the home whites, attacking right to left. Lance Bain triggers the three. Count it. Lance Bain ringing it up from the left wing. That's three trays in the quarter for the Colonels, and uh, that'll bust that zone down. Sure will. That one had some distance on it, too. Andre Reed's going to try again. His ball hit the side of the iron. Saves it inbounds. No, he can't. It gets stolen away from <laughs> oh. Mateo Malbec. 
A screen set there by Josh McClure in transition, and now a timeout from Coach Troy Harris. We'll take the timeout, too. It's 35-30, to 30, Alta Vista leading. We've got 250 left to play in the third quarter on 105.5 KD Country. You'll always leave happy after purchasing a Best Bet Motor Sales vehicle. Stop by our Rustburg or Amherst site and check out our great inventory of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Best Bet Motor Sales, proud to have been awarded the Virginia Quality Dealer Award for District 6, 2016-2017. See for yourself our great selection of pre-owned vehicles. Browse our vehicles. BestBetMotorSales.com, home of the 60-second guaranteed credit approval. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage. 105.5 KD Country. 2.50 left to play in the third quarter. It's a five-point Alta Vista lead now. Teo Malbach has hit a three in this quarter. Daquan Poindexter has hit a three. And Lance Bain most recently from long distance scoring for Alta Vista. Colonels had a little dry spell from behind the arc. I think they hit one against Gretna, Oscar, and just one against Dan River. That one against Dan River, we late. were commenting, yeah, how late it came. We didn't think they were going to get one. But they have hit at least one three-pointer in every game this season. Riverhead's uh, up 45-22 over Stonewall Jackson. Mm. Looks like the Gladiators might end up cruising in that one. Colonel's sort of playing keep away against the Generals' defense right now. It's still the zone defense. They may have matched up in a man-to-man, -man, though. I think they have. I think they're out of the zone in a man now. 2-10 left to play in the third. Colonel's lead by five. Mall back, dribbles to the right corner, sends it between the circles to Lance Bain. Bain thought about a really long three-pointer. It's off to Daquan Poindexter. Poindexter driving, just hands off to Adams as he got in the air. Now it's over to McClure from the right side. His six-footer wouldn't fall. Jump ball tie up here just outside the paint. This time the possession arrow will give it to Alta Vista. We saw it at the Appomattox game. Looked like there was a lid on the basket. Uh, on one end for, Al for yeah. Appomattox. It kind of looks like there's a lid on for the Colonels on this end of the court. Poindexter bounces it into Adams, who gives it right back to Daquan Poindexter. Here comes Lance Bain, three-pointer again. This skips off the front of the iron, no good. Hey, got oh Jacob goodness. Adams with a foul. That's an awful call. Adams got up in the air for the rebound. He touched nobody. It's going to be Adams' second personal foul, team's fifth. We have 1.45 left to play in the third quarter. It's a five-point Alta, Alta, Alta Vista lead, pardon me, at the moment. <laughs> Williams' floater got smacked into oblivion by Josh McClure. You can hear the crowd come alive. Williams thought he had gained enough space to get away from the big right arm of McClure, but no, he swatted that thing into the wall. It's still William Campbell basketball after the block shot. Catch and shoot three pointer from Williams. It was online, but just a bit too strong. Another hustle play by Jake Adams. He got another rebound. Mall back saunters across the timeline, now sends it to the left sideline in the hands of Daquan Poindexter, who's just going to hold it. Nobody's within 10 feet of Daquan Poindexter. Both coaches barking out instructions, pointing fingers, telling guys where to go and when to be there. It's over in the hands of Josh McClure. Now he sends it right side to Mateo Malback. Colonels content to play keep away again. They want to draw this William Campbell defense out just a little bit. McClure will have to initiate. Oh, he lost the handle. It was stolen by Pierre West, but West couldn't maintain it as the ball went out of bounds. Mateo Malback got, kind of got over in the corner of the front court. Dangerous position to be in. Yeah, West sort of just ambushed him when he wasn't really looking. He for really him. did. Nice ju jump trap almost. Now Colonels back in keep away mode again for the moment. Daquan Poindexter holds it about five feet inside the half-court stripe. Now it goes baseline to McClure. McClure's pass intercepted. Josh Rosser has it. He'll bring it right down the middle. Got a general injured down there. The left-handed finish from Rosser wouldn't go. It's taken away by Mateo Malbeck. He sends a long pass up ahead to Adams. Adams catches play. and scores. I mean, that, that was very athletic. In full flight, he had to catch, and he came to the ground and just pushed it back up to the front of the iron. And avoid the contact. 37-30. Alta Vista's lead has swelled to seven points. Down to 14 seconds left to play in the quarter. Generals could really use a bucket here before the time ends. Williams pump fakes the three. Drives in from the left wing. Line drive off the backboard. No good. He's still holding something. He is not in good shape. Mall back with a long distance try at the buzzer. No good. The Colonels have got a seven-point advantage headed into the fourth quarter. 
It's out to Vista 37, William Campbell 30. One more quarter in regulation on 105.5 KD Country. What do basketball, choir, drama club, and marching band all have in common? They're all high school activities that offer learning opportunities not necessarily found in the classroom. They take up just a fraction of a typical Virginia high school's budget, and they go a long way to giving young people the tools they need to thrive. High school activities, they're more than extracurricular. They're extra important, too. Brought to you by English Construction Company with offices in Lynchburg. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. The Alta Vista Colonels led by one at halftime. It was a hungry quarter for Alta Vista. They put their nose to the grindstone there, Mr. Briggs, to get that seven-point lead. They had to earn it, too, because William Campbell making them work as hard as they can. 14-8 to eight quarter for the Colonels on the back of three three-pointers. Uh, Malbec, Bain, and Poindexter all contributing. If the three-pointers don't go in, probably about an even quarter there. You can't really fault William Campbell and say that they did a whole lot wrong, although the Generals never really got the basketball in the paint much on offense. And I think it was a, a, a little bit too much strike one Williams just from my little bit too much one-on-one. -on -one. Sure. He's going to try and work with an isolation move right now. Passes in the corner to Andre Reed. Reed hit a three-pointer for William Campbell. Another block. Quarter. The layup is blocked there by a combination of McClure and Malbec. Teo in a hurry. That pass tipped out of bounds into the front row. It'll stay with Alta Vista. Hey, we've been doing shout-outs to Glenn and Linda Miller. Haven't been in a game in quite some while. And they they're are here, they're they're here, here tonight. tonight. I spent a little bit of time with Linda before the game. Got my nice hug. and great. I told her it was great to see them here. I'm guessing inbound pass goes to Galliard. I'll hold that thought for the moment. Traveling violation on Chancellor Mormon as he caught it and made a move to the hoop. I'm guessing this last week and today was very busy for the oh Millers my. down there. So... Maybe they decided to have a little fun on Valentine's Day. I promise you that, that they uh, needed a break and great way to blow off some steam and come watch the Colonels basketball game. Traquan Williams just walks it across the timeline. He takes his time, glances over at his coach on the sideline there to get the set play. Started this set with a 1-4 stack. 7.20 left to play in the fourth quarter. Generals only trail by seven. Plenty of time left to do their thing, but they got to be careful. You don't want to fall down double digits. Not to a quality ball club like Alta Vista. Here's the catch and shoot three from Pierre West. No good. Malbach has to run it down on the weak side. He will grab it, weave his way in and out of some defenders and his own teammates. Now he's across the timeline. He'll put on the brakes. Sends it to the free throw line left in Lawrence Galliard. McClure post moves inside. Kiss off the window and in. Josh McClure continues his tear. Alta Vista now leading by nine. First bucket of the second half, Kyle. Mm. So he picks up where he left nice off. Nice hustle by Chancellor Mormon. Yeah, Mormon. Boy, the guards have, have done extremely well tonight, causing some disruptions. Poindexter all alone for three from the left corner. No good. Nearly got his own rebound. Mormon with a nice steal there to get it started, though. You were right. William Campbell basketball. There's a steal by nice Lawrence Gallier. Gallier just saw that pass the whole way and stepped in front. Got his basket. Got the hands in his. Got hit the basketball in his hands again. Now he'll give it off to. Dake one Poindexter. Poindexter's going to one-hand it to the right sideline to Mateo Malbach. Between the legs dribble. Here's a little give and go from Galliard. He lost the basketball. Rosser out of there with it. He's got Galliard right behind him. He skies up and is fouled. Galliard coming in from that backside. You knew he had that on his mind the whole time, trying to block Rosser from behind. That's but his made fourth. some contact. That is Lawrence Galliard's fourth. Galliard has not scored a ton, but he's been a pretty constant presence out there for Alta Vista. Lawrence with five on the night. It's Alta Vista's sixth team foul as well, so the next one they commit will put William Campbell in the bonus situation. We've got six minutes exactly left to play in our contest. The fourth quarter presented by English is your complete home center. Substitutes in for Alta Vista. It's Jacob Adams and Lance Bain. They join Josh McClure, Daquan Poindexter, and Mateo Malbach. Generals have Evan Daniel, Traquan Williams, Josh Rosser at the free throw line, Pierre West, and Nikia Pierman. Second free throw up. This one's good. First bucket that William Campbell has scored in a while. Makes our score 39-31. Full court zone pressure from William Campbell. The Colonels break it with a long pass. McClure, nobody stepped in front. He just got right there to the left, low post. 
and scored it with relative ease well, off he, the glass. He, he did a great job with the change of pace. He kind of lulled him to sleep, thinking he was just going to kind of saunter in, and he really turned on the Jets. Williams driving, working right to left across the paint. The step back 14-footer does not go down, and the rebound collected by Daquan Poindexter off the gym floor. Jacob Adams is going to get whistled for taking too many steps, and now here's a timeout from William Campbell. We'll take the timeout, too. It's a 10-point out to miss the lead. 5.26 left to play in the fourth quarter on 105.5 KD Country. Installing atrium vinyl replacement windows is like an investment in your home that can begin to pay dividends right away. You can save up to 30% or more on your home's heating and cooling costs. Add to your home's equity and add to its value by upgrading its looks and energy efficiency. Custom-crafted atrium vinyl replacement windows. Invest in your home's future with English's. English's is your complete home center. Business 29, Alta Vista. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage. 105.5 KD Country. Alta Vista leading William Campbell 41-31. to I'm Kyle. He's Oscar. OB, the pep band was just playing one of the themes from Rocky over there. The Colonels have had to pull out their best Rocky impersonation at times tonight. It's been a hard-fought 10-point lead, and it's not over yet. No, and, and you got a couple people in foul trouble, and uh, like you said, 528 remaining. Uh, William Campbell's certainly capable of getting hot and going on a 6-8-0 run. We've seen him do it against the Colonels on a couple occasions this year. In the other conference 44 semifinal, Riverheads was up 20 at last glance over Stonewall Jackson. So it looks like the winner of this game set to take on Riverheads. If Alta Vista wins, that game will be here on Thursday, 6 p.m. If William Campbell were to come back and get the victory. <laughs> we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, they would be traveling to Riverheads High School. There's a steal from Daquan Poindexter. He just could not keep it in bounds over there on the far sideline, though. Good hustle by Daquan to disrupt the offense from William Campbell. Boy, how many times have the, the Colonels gotten to the passing lane in this second half? It's been a ton. It's been a bunch. And it's been a, it's been everybody. Mateo's done it. Daquan's done it. Uh, Chancellor's done it. Jake Adams has done it. Lawrence Galliard's yep. done it. Reading those passes well, and some of these passes do have some length to them from William Campbell. Rosser driving. Nice spin move. Can't get it to go off the window. It never hit the iron. There's an offensive foul on William Campbell trying to get the basketball back. Let's see which general gets the infraction. It's on number 21, Nakia Pierman. It's the fifth one on William Campbell. And it comes with 5.04 left to play in regulation. It's, it's Pierman's third, pardon me. Full court pressure from William Campbell again. They're going to get fouled. Going to get a foul called on them. Malbach was trying to make it up the right sideline with the dribble. That's the six. Colonel will be shooting from this point in. And if you're a Wimble camp, if you're Coach Teron Watson, the way the Colonels have shot free throws, you really don't mind that. Maybe not. Running out of fouls to give, though, for some individuals. That's the fourth one on Pierre West. And he cannot. they cannot afford to lose him. No, he's going to stay in the ball game. Give and go from McClure to Malbach. Malbach pulls up from the left elbow. 15-footer does not fall. It's rebounded by Pierre West. West will bring it up just right of center. Now he angles to the sideline. His pass is deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with the Generals here with 4.46 left to play in the fourth period. Andre Reed's going to get back in the game for William Campbell. He joins Evan Daniel, Pierre West, Traquan Williams, and Josh Rosser. Colonels counter with... Malbach, McClure, Adams, Bain, and Poindexter. They lob it into Evan Daniel. Daniel fouled as he was catching. That's Josh McClure. That one was just a little bit of a touch foul. McClure can't believe it. It'll send Evan Daniel, I believe, to the free throw line to shoot a one and one. Stops the clock with 449 left in the fourth period. It's brought to you by English's, your complete home center. All in-stock Carhartt gear is on sale the month of February in English's. First one's no good. It was the third foul on Josh McClure. It's rebounded by Pierre West. He can't get it to go from the right side. Malbach practically run over by Andre Reed. Practically? Basketball. <laughs> the basketball is going to stay with the Colonels, though, as it was last touched out of bounds off Reed. Practically. Malbach hit the brakes, and Reed just kind of ran up his back there. He'll inbound it to Mateo Malbach. He had to fly by a defender. Off to Lance Bain, who is just tackled. Uh, hmm. That was not intentional, but Pierre West was 
really going out of control speed. It's going to be the fifth foul on Pierre West. Again, I don't think it was an intentional foul, but West just not in control of his uh, own body. I, I kind of disagree. I think it was intentional. I don't think it was flagrant. I think it was okay. intentional. All right, that's a good way to describe <laughs> it. That's the fifth one on Pierre West. His night is done early. We've got four minutes and 35 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. Alta Vista can extend the lead from the free throw line. Colonels really haven't scored in about 90 seconds or two minutes, Oscar. At the moment, they lead 41 to 31. Officials just checking with the scorer's table to make sure everything is in order. And one referee gives the thumbs up, and Lance Bain going to try some free throws. Bain's first one. No good. He missed two in a row. Remember, he missed one back there on the three-point play yep. attempt. Pardon me, four-point play attempt. Rare misses from Lance Bain, who is the steadiest of all the Colonel free throw shooters. At over 85%. Nakia Pierman lost it for a moment. Flips it off to the left corner to Traquan Williams. He sprints across the lane from left to right. Three-pointer on the way and good from Nakia Pierman. Some much-needed life for the William Campbell Generals. They trail by seven now. And the Colonels have been a little bit sloppy here the last couple of minutes. Poindexter weaving his way through traffic. Skies to the front of the iron. He wanted the dunk. He got fouled. Poindexter came from at least nine feet out coming down the middle of the lane. He was going to bring a Jordan-esque type of dunk down, but got fouled, and the ball really slipped out of his hands. 4-0-1 left to play in the contest. Poindexter will shoot two. Third foul on Evan Daniel. Eighth team foul on William Campbell as a team. Mateo Malbach returning to the ball game for Alta Vista. We've got, again, just over four minutes left to play in the ball game. It's a 42-34 Alta Vista lead. Second one on the way and good. Make it a 43-34 Alta Vista lead. Nine-point advantage. Here come the generals. Working left to right. Rosser sprints into the front court. Steps on the three-point line. Passes at Traquan Williams' left point. No dribble yet from the big man, Williams. Low pocket pass to Rosser. Rosser got twisted around and tried to fire with the left hand. No good. Got his own rebound. Fires it back up. Waylaid in the act of shooting that time. He'll step to the charity stripe and shoot too. We're going to see a steady parade here this last three minutes and 41 seconds, I'm afraid. I think you're right. Just the first foul on Daquan Poindexter. Yeah, the game really already has lost some of the flow that it had in the first half. Remember, I commented that the first quarter really flew by. You can't make that comment here for the fourth quarter. Both free throws converted for Josh Rosser. That's good news for William Campbell. Head coach Troy Harris wants to take a timeout for Alta Vista. We'll take it with him. It's a 43-36 to 36 Alta Vista advantage. 341 left to play in the fourth quarter on 105.5 KD Country. When you need an important business loan, you want to deal with a decision maker who will respond quickly. I'm Penny Wallace with local First National Bank at our airport branch. I'm focused on business customers, and we have a streamlined process to help you with any loan need. I can offer various business loans for real estate, new equipment, and credit lines. So for better business banking, think of us first. That's local First National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. The Alta Vista Colonel's lead is 43-36 at the moment. Generals last led in the second quarter, Oscar. It was a one-point Alta Vista lead at halftime. Good third quarter for the Colonels. They've been okay here in the fourth quarter. They can't seem to put William Campbell away. Got the lead up to 10, and William Campbell just kind of hanging in at 7-8. Six range doesn't want to go away. And as the teams went to the bench, there was a, a little bit of chatter back and forth among the players. And you know, three tightly contested games over the last two weeks, and yep. uh, that's not unusual. No, nope. like I said a lot on the line. County rivalry. These players know each other, and as you said, you play a same team three times in a couple of weeks. It could get a little testy. Long bomb pass from Poindexter to Malbec, and he scores for two from the left side. That'll pad the Colonel's lead. It's up to nine again, 45-36. And Daquan's become very, uh, that's become a nice weapon for the Colonel's. Daquan's pretty accurate. 
Oh, here's a foul. It'll be a double. This could be a double foul. Yep, I think the referee's got this right. Andre Reed fired a three-pointer from the right wing. He went to the ground as Malbach boxed him out, and he locked his legs around Mateo Malbach's right leg. It was like a wrestling hold almost. Malbach, in an attempt to get his foot free, sort of stomped the ground. He didn't stomp on Reed, but the officials will now talk things over with head coach Troy Harris. You and I saw it, and the referee saw it, and I, I think a double foul might be right, but I'm not sure they got Malbach for a foul. It might just be on Andre Reed. No, they got him. Yep, it's the first one on Mateo Malbach. It's the third one on Andre Reed. The basketball will stay with the Alta Vista Colonels uh -oh. after the, the missed three-pointer. The official was right on top of it. He separated them. He did a nice job of making sure that that thing didn't get escalated. Colonels will inbound. Got to go the full length of the court again. They lead by nine. 325 left to play. In the fourth quarter, it's brought to you by English as your complete home center. Colonels break the full court pressure. Poindexter had a three-on-two fast break. The pass was a little low, intended for Chancellor Mormon, and it skips out of bounds. It's going to return to William Campbell. 315 left to play in the ball game. Generals can't have any wasted possessions now, Oscar. I know they're only down nine. They got to make the most of every time they touch the basketball. Well, and the Colonels can't do a have a four or five second possession and turn the ball over either. Williams looks right, passes left instead, gets the basketball back, going to work around a Tyler Easley screen. <laughs> Easley in the game for his first action. Boy, he's quick. Got a lot of energy off that bench. There's a traveling violation on Traquan Williams. Caught the basketball in the right corner and just didn't put the dribble down quickly enough. Lawrence Galliard's back in the game for Alta Vista. He's going to get Mormon, I think. It's Galliard, Malbec, McClure, Adams, and Poindexter. Mormon did the old, oh, I'm not paying attention, I'm not coming out routine. <laughs> Colonels will work right to left from our perspective in the home white jerseys. We're here at the press box at Alta Vista High School. Crowd's been into it, really, since about midway through the first quarter. They were a little, they were a little late getting started. They that's weren't right. used to the early start time. But after that, they've been into it, vocal, and that's fans from both sides. McClure, crossover dribble, leaves it off for Jacob Adams. He'll hand off to Lawrence Galliard now. Colonel's clearly trying to take some time, trying to take some air out of the basketball, run that clock down. Doing that high post weave out at, uh, in between the top of the key and midcourt. Yeah, it just ends up being a handoff series. Galliard had it on the far sideline. Now it's Daquan Poindexter. He'll drive and get through, try the dunk. It skipped off the front of the iron. Galliard with the putback won't go. Poindexter bounced it out to the top of the key. Generals have the basketball in the front court. There's a spin o rammel from Andre Reed, and he is fouled. Colonels might have bailed him out there. I'm not sure Reed had a legit chance to make the layup. However, it doesn't matter now. Reed's going to go to the free throw line. Clock is stopped. 2.08 left to play in the ball game. Good. Coach Harris is uh, having a little conference there with Daquan. Ooh. Coach Harris is going to send Chancellor Mormon back in the ball game. He's going in for Daquan. Reed's first one on the way. In and out, no good. Generals would help their cause greatly if they could score without the clock moving. Tyler Easley's into the ball game for William Campbell. Reed's second one on the way here in a matter of moments. We've got 2.08 left to play in the ball game. It's a nine point Alta Vista lead. Second one does go in. There was plenty of jockeying for that rebound. Adams will pick up the loose ball and inbound it for the Colonels. There's a foul. Mateo Malbach caught the basketball. He was a full 84 feet away from the hoop. No, oh, no, it's a kickball. Pardon me, it was on the pass. It's going to stay with Alta Vista. Adams cannot run the baseline now after the kickball there from William Campbell. Gets it into Malbach again. He'll try and circle the defense around Williams. Tied up, was able to fling it to McClure on the jump pass. McClure takes his time, breaking the timeline here as the defense sags back. Now Williams will pick up Josh McClure. Hands off to Galliard. Colonel's going to run some time down again. Galliard lost wow. the basketball, had it poked out of his hands, and they're going to whistle Josh Rosser for a foul there, and that's a bit of a touch foul. Lawrence yeah. Galliard will shoot two shots now. It's a double bonus situation for both ball clubs from here on out. Both teams have committed ten fouls. Galliard looking to his left, studying the bench. And Lawrence gets the basketball and gets ready to shoot some free throws here. 150 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's brought to you by English's, your complete home center. 
The Colonel's lead will stay at 45-37. On the court for Alta Vista, it's Lawrence Galliard, Jacob Adams, Josh McClure, Chancellor Mormon, and Mateo Malbeck. Free throw, no good. Adams with a stick back and a score. He's pumped up. That might bail the Colonels out. It gets the lead back to 10. We've only got 140 left to play in the ball game. That might be enough, OB. The running layup from Josh Rosser will not fall. The rebound is loose. Diving after it is McClure and also Nikita Pierman. Ball got on the floor. We've got a timeout. Alta Vista will take the timeout. Let's take it with them. They lead by 10. We've got 92 seconds left to play in regulation on 105.5 KD Country. A short travel save you money. I'm Greg Walker with an exciting new offer from Feller Chevrolet. Purchase any new used vehicle of Feller's and receive a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty and a 3-day, 100% money-back guarantee. Again, a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty and a 3-day money-back guarantee. At Feller Chevrolet, we stand behind what we sell, and we save you money. Come see us. You'll be glad you did. A short travel save you money. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. One minute and 32 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter here at Alta Vista High School. The Colonels lead by 10, 47-37. William Campbell was really threatening there, Oscar. Lawrence Galliard missed a couple free throws, and then Jacob Adams with the rebound and the putback for two. Uh, to me, I think that's going to be enough for Alta Vista to hold on. You never know, and I'm sure the Generals have plenty of fight left in them. But that was a big basket there, a big offensive rebound, and then a big basket by Jacob Adams. Well, and, and, you know, we've talked about it all year. Uh, Jake just continues to bring those hustle plays. He'll, he'll do anything it's asked. He's an ultimate role player for the Colonels. He really gets after it. He plays with energy, plays with enthusiasm. Rebounded there by McClure. It was a good box out by Adams, Malbeck, and McClure to clear the lane. That might have been the last ditch there for William Campbell. They needed that shot to go in. Wonder if the Generals will foul here with 113 left. Gallier tries to dunk, and that won't go in. And there's a foul as Tyler easily got tangled up with Mateo Malbeck. They whistled number one Mateo Malbeck for the foul. There's a technical foul assessed. And this is going to be on Tyler Easley, I believe. Gosh, it's getting a little bit strange down here. It's, it's been a little bit chippy from about the four-minute on point. Um, and then the uh, the Malbeck read situation went and... A couple of missed dunks from Alta Vista have seemingly got their anxiety and blood pressure up a little bit. What should happen is Tyler Easley should be shooting two free throws because William Campbell's in the double bonus. And then Alta Vista will get to select a player to shoot two free throws for the technical foul. And it'll be Alta Vista basketball with 1.10 left to play in the fourth quarter, leading by 10. Easley's first one will not go. Second one on the way. Both teams have had some back-and-forth chatter. There's been some displays of good sportsmanship, too, but it seems like in this fourth quarter, the bad sportsmanship has outshined the good. Both officials have had their fair share of conference and conversation with the referees and their own players, for that matter. Colonels will send Mateo Ball back to the charity stripe to, to shoot two for them. He's got the highest percentage of the five Colonels on the floor, so statistically that makes sense. His first one won't go either off the front of the iron. <laughs> one ten remaining in the fourth quarter. 47-37. Colonels lead. Second one's not going to fall either, so <laughs> four consecutive free throws missed from both ball clubs. And Alta Vista will inbound on the far sideline right. And Coach Harris has showed his frustration a little bit at, at the last two or three minutes away that this game's gotten a little out of hand. Probably feels like his team should have blown out William Campbell. But you got to give the generals full credit for fighting and working hard to stay in the game. I wonder if they'll foul intentionally. Tyler Easley just got into the body of Mateo Malbach. That was not an intentional foul, but probably a foul. Easily second. Malbach going to return to the place he was a mere, I don't know, three seconds. seven seconds yeah. ago? Yeah. yeah. Seven at most. Let's hope he fares better. He should have it in range now. He stands 15 feet away shooting the free shots here in the 
does sink the first one. Gets the Alta Vista lead up to 11. 48-37. And, and it is a little bit more comfortable shooting free throws when you have people along the lane than it is when you're shooting a technical. I think so. Heard a couple former players and current players comment on that. They say for some reason it just feels weird when you're standing out there by yourself. You practice them that way. Oh, well. Ball back sinks both. 49-37. Traquan Williams trying to barge into the lane. He's tied up with Chancellor Mormon, but they'll end up calling it a traveling violation. And now Third every call there. that's made um, is getting disputed. Yeah, every call is scrutinized anyway, and, you know, officials are going to make half the people mad and half the people happy with every call, unless it's just those blatantly obvious ones. Full court pressure from the generals. Colonels break it. Two on one fast break. Mall back. Finger roll. Finishes good for two. 51-37. And the Colonels are going to get out of here with a win. Down to 45 seconds left in the game. Rosser will drive. He leans away from the basket. His shot too strong. Rebounded by McClure. I don't think the generals are going to foul. And William Campbell is going to see their season come to a close tonight. We've still got 30 seconds left in regulation. Maybe the Colonels want to score again to put a cherry on top. Ball back. Floats one of the back of the iron. No good. Galliard with a stick back for two. That will fall. 53-37. The question is, is this going to be the third game in this series that's had a 16-point differentiation at the end of the game? Very possible. Teron Watson not happy with the call that's gone against the Generals. Alta Vista will have the basketball back. 17.8 seconds left to play. They inbound it to Lance Bain. Bain puts it up. He's blocked from the right post. Lance Bain will stride to the charity stripe with 15 seconds left. 53-37. Alta Vista leading. Colonels are going to improve to 16-5. William Campbell's going to see their season end at 5-17. Alta Vista's going to advance to take on Riverheads. Thursday night, that game will be here. Subway pregame show will be on around 5-40. Bain's first one's good. And it's been a it's been a great, it's been a gallant effort here by William Campbell. It sure has. It's been fun to watch. It hasn't always been clean basketball, and we've had our share of misfortunes and those sorts of things, but overall, a lot of fun here tonight on Valentine's Day. Down to eight seconds. Traquan Williams will fire a 34-foot three-pointer. I guess he just wanted to see if he could make it. He had plenty of distance. Just off the mark a bit. Bounces out of bounds. We've got 2.8 seconds left now in the ball game. Colonels just have to inbound it. They're going to win this one. 55 to 37. Alta Vista. Now, pardon me. Hang on. We get another foul with 0.5 seconds left. And Jake Adams took exception. He kind of got, he got jerked on and he didn't like it at all. Got a bit of a stare down going between a couple players. It wouldn't shock me if the referees just said, hey, we're, this, we're going to end this thing. We've got .5 seconds left. The referees are asking William Campbell if they want to put anybody in the lane while Jacob Adams shoots this free throw here. It's a strange ending to a strange game. Adams gets the basketball. He can pad his stat line and possibly get the Colonels a 20-point victory. Sinks the first one. It's now 56-37. We've seen everything, even a fan ejection. With .5 seconds left. Adams cans both, so it is going to be a 20-point Alta Vista lead. 57-37. The Colonels win and will advance on to the Conference 44 final. That'll be here on Thursday night. Subway postgame show on the way when we return to 105.5 KD Country. Life happens. Divorce, family problems, criminal charges, civil litigation, personal injury cases. Turn to David W. Shreve, an experienced attorney at law. David W. Shreve has been practicing law for over 30 years. Free consultation for personal injury cases. David W. Shreve wishing good luck to the Alta Vista Boys basketball team in the playoffs. Go Colonels! David W. Shreve located 7th Street, Alta Vista, or by phone 369-6621. There's nothing like a winning team to bring pride and enthusiasm to a community. The Alta Vista Office of Economic Development is a proud supporter of Colonel Sports. Congratulations to the coaches and players on a winning season. And good luck in the basketball playoffs. The Alta Vista Office of Economic Development, helping grow a better community 
For more information and business incentives, contact Dennis Jarvis at Town Hall, 7th Street, Alta Vista. PCM Industrial Services recognizes the importance of high school athletics by sponsoring this award-winning broadcast. PCM Industrial Maintenance and Construction Specialists providing welding, millwright, erection, and fabrication services to all forms of industry throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. From offices in Alta Vista, PCM Industrial Services congratulates the Alta Vista basketball teams on another successful season. Good luck in the playoffs. Go Colonels. Some people have never tried food at a Mexican restaurant. So we asked Chad Shelton from Shelton's Plumbing and Heating about his experience. I wasn't so sure what the green stuff was, but they slipped some on my plate one day, and now I won't have a meal without guacamole. Still can't spell it. At El Cazador Mexican Restaurant, if you have questions, they give you the answers in English. Mexican and American foods, affordable prices, and fast service. Try it today, El Cazador Main Street, Alta Vista. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. The Alta Vista Colonels win it 57 to 37 against William Campbell. It was a hard-fought victory. It was a close game. It was a one-point Alta Vista lead at the end of the first half of play. I'm Kyle Haney. He's Oscar Briggs. We had some exciting things in this ball game. Some things that weren't so classy but overall i think it was a good ball game to watch and william campbell's season is done at 5 and 17 oscar the pep man fires up to serenade the fans as they leave the building the fans got their money's worth tonight it was a good game colonel's record improves to 16 and 5 they're going to take on riverheads at home thursday night 6 p.m and we'll be here live yes we will we'll be We'll be here tomorrow night. We will be here tomorrow night. Lady Colonel's action will tip off at 6 tomorrow against LeRae. We'll talk about that and more, get you some post-game statistics from this one, and wrap things up on the Subway post-game show right after this quick timeout. It's Alta Vista 57, William Campbell 37. You heard it all live on 105.5 KD Country. 841-1580. That's the number to know this winter when your heat pump is in trouble. D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling is the name to know for all your heating and air issues. Call 841-1580 to get Don and his team to your house or business fast. 841-1580. That's 434-841-1580. D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling, the name to know this winter. The number to know, 841-1580. Napa Know How. You can start a car with a bad taillight or a busted radio, but a bad battery, you're going nowhere. So go with the Napa Legend battery, now with up to a $20 prepaid Visa card by mail. 20 bucks back and a battery you can trust. That's Napa Know How. Napa Know How. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores, offer expires 228.17. Brought to you by Napa of Alta Vista. At Subway, Monday is no longer Monday. It's Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki Day. That's the 350 sub of the day. Subway has a different six inch sub of the day every day of the week. Each has no artificial flavors or colors from artificial sources. For just 350, it's a great sub for a great price. Wednesday, that's Turkey Breast Day. Friday, tuna day. The 350 sub of the day every day at Subway. At participating restaurants, additional charges for extras and deluxe plus tax may not be combined with other offers, coupons, or discount cards. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service. A family serving families since 1905. Personal, memorable, memorial moments. Celebrating life more. Pre-arrangements with confidence. Trust and care from our family to yours. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation In basketball, the right combination can save a game. In life, it can save your wallet. Visit Lori Watkins State Farm Insurance in Alta Vista to talk about combining your home and auto insurance and save some money. Like the Colonels, Lori Watkins State Farm wants to put together the right combination so you can win with all of your insurance and financial services needs. Reach Lori or her team at LoriWatkins.net to start winning today. Good luck, Colonels. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. Subway postgame show concluding from Alta Vista High School is a large crowd still 
hanging out to wait and congratulate the guys on their good win here tonight. And I'm sure some William Campbell fans congratulating their team on wrapping up a good season. Generals fall short in this one tonight. Hard to believe Alta Vista got it to a 20-point lead there at the end, Oscar, but uh, it, it got ugly. It did. I mean, it, it was double fouls, throws, technicals. Yep. Yeah. The free throws added up. You know, the Colonels, not bad from the free throw line down the stretch. I mean, with the exception of those two that Malbach missed on the technical foul. But anyway, we don't want to get too many details going on here. Let me remind you before you get to the stats, Footlong Fest is on at Subway. Any footlong, just six in, just six dollars. I don't know why I'm screwing that up. It's a footlong really. sub for six dollars. I mean, yes, you can get six inch six inch subs still, but anyway. Colonels eight out of thirteen from the free throw line in the fourth quarter, which there is a little go. bit better than than what they ordinarily shoot. So, uh, and really held William Campbell to fifteen points in the second half, uh, eight in the second in the third quarter, and seven in the fourth quarter. Hmm. And, and and we saw. I mean, we commented the defense was strong. They were jumping into passing lanes. They were yeah. uh, not letting them penetrate. They were really forcing Williams to do a lot of one-on-one stuff. Rosser didn't get a lot of shots. Um, That's a great point. It, the threes weren't falling for William Campbell either like they were earlier in the ball game. And some of that's because they were being forced to shoot him on the move or from further out because of that. Reed with one defense. field goal in the second half. Rosser with none. Wow. Tracon Williams with one in the second half. Wow. Daniel with one. Pierman with one. <laughs> so, uh, great job defensively as a team from the Colonels. Yeah, that speaks to the Alta Vista defense. No doubt about it. Great stuff here tonight. Let's get some post-game scoring numbers brought to, the, brought to you by the meticulous uh, penmanship and statistical abilities of Mr. Oscar Briggs. I don't know. I got caught up in the game at the end, and I had to oh, catch up. So, no, I got him. Oh, nice. Um, uh, first, for the Colonels, Jake Adams with eight, Lance Bain with eight, Mateo Malbach with 13, Daquan Poindexter with seven, Gallier with seven, and Josh McCoura with 14. Um, Poindexter had all seven in the second half, Malbach with nine in the second half. Mm. Four, William Campbell. Josh Rosher with seven, Reed with six, Traquan Williams with ten. He had eight in the first half, holding him to ten for the ball game. Nice defensive job. Pierre West with three, Evan Daniel with eight, and Nakia Pierman with three. It was a tale of two halves for a lot of guys. It was McClure for Alta Vista in the first half, Williams for William Campbell in the first half, and then in the second half it was uh, some other guys' time to shine. But we, we talked about that earlier in the first two games, how that happened. Um, Subway post-game show is wrapping up right now but before we go we've got to do players of the game and let me also remind you we're on tomorrow night it's Alta Vista Lady Colonels basketball they're hosting Luray Subway pregame show will start around 545 ish tip off scheduled for six and then of course we'll have some more guys basketball action as Alta Vista will host Riverheads in the conference 44 title game on Thursday all right Oscar now that I've said that let's go player of the game time I know he got limited in the second half, but for me, it's got to be Traquan Williams, the four-point play. He had eight in a row for William Campbell. They wouldn't have been that close if it wasn't for him, and I, I love his game. Remember, remember, folks, no seniors on the That's roster right. for William Campbell. It's yeah, gonna be, they're going to be tough. They are going to be tough. They're going to be a handful. And uh, As much as I hate to agree with you, I'm going to and, and go with Traquan Williams. He was clearly the uh, force to be reckoned with on the court for the generals tonight. On the other side for the Colonels, Ooh. You, could, you could go a lot of different directions here, couldn't you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know where I'm going. I'm gazing. Do you know where you're going? You yeah. want to go first in that sure. case? Go ahead. Um, You know, he's been spotty. Uh, looked like after the Brooklyn game, he stepped up and, and played two or three really good games in a row. And, and uh, he had a rough stretch, but uh, Boyd Mateo and Wildback was engaged tonight. Uh, he was all over the floor, uh, did a great job running the points, scored nine points in that second half, uh, 13 for the game. I like his effort on the on the boards. I like him defensively. Uh, it was either – it came down to him, and, and really, you know, with this, despite the fact that Josh McClure had a great start, double-double, uh, Jake Adams brought so much energy defensively and I think, you know, really disrupted William Campbell and what they wanted to do. So honorable mention to Jake and player of the game for me is Mateo Malbec. I like to pick, you know, Mateo, you know, for a guard, he rebounds extremely well. I don't know if he's quite in the Russell Westbrook rebounding territory, but 
He's a very good rebounding guard. He hit that three at the beginning of the yeah. ball game, and yeah. then he hit the three at the beginning of the second half. Man, you're trying to talk me into it, aren't you? No, just <laughs> stating facts. You're making, those are facts, and those are really swaying my argument here. Uh, I thought of this guy while you were talking. I'm going to go with Jacob Adams. I mean, he got Love that it. rebound late on the rebound on the missed free throw and then scored. That, to me, that sealed it. That got the lead back up to 10 points. Colonels were only up 10 with about a minute 20 left. They end up winning the game by 20. That shows you what happened in that last minute or so. Uh, but Jake, all over the place, the defense, the rebounding, the energy he brings off the bench, the spark. He's a guy that uh, he, he wears his emotions on his sleeve, and he plays with them too. And I like that. So he's going to be my pick. I can't fault you for Mateo Malbach. You really almost talked me into it there. That was good campaign work by you. Our player of the game, as always, Eleanor got us started, and then Katie came in out of the bullpen and picked us up with the sound engineering work there, and that was great stuff. Seamless to the listener. We had no idea, even on, even on our end. They're doing a great job over there. They're getting better and better. They're turning their game up for playoffs, too. Our sponsors tonight, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for these folks, D.L. Bryant Heating and Cooling. Call Donnie at 841-1580. Lori Watkins, your new State Farm agent in Alta Vista. David W. Shreve, life happens when you need expert legal advice. Turn to David Shreve, attorney at law. Best Bet Motor Sales, Virginia Quality Dealer, District 6 award winner. Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service, a family serving families since 1905. The Alta Vista Office of Economic Development. We invite you to come find one of a kind. PCM Industrial Services, now with mobile welding and repair service. English Construction, wishing our high school athletes an exciting and injury-free game. Napa Auto Parts in Alta Vista. Find your Napa know-how on Main Street. English is your complete home center, North Main Street in Alta Vista. First National Bank, helping you bring home more bacon. Feller Chevrolet, now offering a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. And El Cazador, check out the daily lunch specials at El Cazador on Main Street. We're out of here for tonight. Alta Vista gets a 20-point victory, 57-37. I'm Kyle Haney. He's Oscar Briggs for Eleanor, Katie, Troy Harris, who joined us in the pregame show. We'll talk to you again tomorrow night for some Lady Colonels basketball and then it's boys basketball back in action Thursday night at home. Conference 44 title game hosting Riverheads. Hope you enjoyed it. How about enjoying some more of this real country music on 105.5 KD Country.